Hello Bay Broncos, happy Friday. It is the 10th of December um, and it feels like winter outside. There was ice all over my windshield this morning. I had to wait for it to thaw before I drove to work. Um, this week on Wednesday we had a PTA meeting, so thank you for all who came out. We had vision testing for TK Kinder second and fifth grade um, on Thursday and then today is Human Rights Day. Also this week I sent out a video to classes because I was very concerned about loop behavior before school. There is no one out there to supervise kids before 8.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday. And we had some problems. Kids were pushing the gate so hard that they were bending the hinges. We had to have our maintenance department come out to fix the gate today. So I sent a video out to classes. Um, it's funny because kids have come up to me over and over again and they're like, you were really serious. And I was like, yeah. They were like, you were mad. I was like, yeah, I was a little mad. We need to improve behavior. We know what we're supposed to do. So hopefully that will help and we'll be safer in the loop. Um, next week is the week before winter break. It's very, it's spirit week. So Monday is funny face mask. Um, we, if, funny face mask day, which will be fun. It'll be fun to see all the face masks. Tuesday is twin day and it's also meal distribution day. Um, if you are on our meal distribution list, you should have gotten a call today from Miss Monica. Wednesday is our SSC meeting. And it is fictional character day, so you can dress as any fictional character that you want. Thursday is very exciting because it's Disney Day. You know how I love a good Disney. Um, and it's also a Trimester One Awards assembly, which will be on Zoom Thursday morning during school. And then for kids. And then on Friday, we have a day of play and pajama day. My parent communication on Monday will have more information about that. And teachers will be reaching out about what you can send to school. And then on Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. at the HOA building is the PTA's Holiday Boutique. So that should be really fun too. So I hope you're all doing well. And remember, today and every day, it's great to be a Bronco. And I have a great book to read today. I'm going to read half of it today for Human Rights Day. And it's called Passage to Freedom, The Sugihara Story. And it's by Ken Mochizuki. It's a hard one to say for me. There is a saying that the eyes tell everything about a person. At a store, my father saw a young Jewish boy who didn't have enough money to buy what he wanted. So my father gave the boy some of his. That boy looked into my father's eyes and to thank him, invited my father to his home. That is when my family went to a Hanukkah celebration for the first time. I was five years old. In 1940, my father was a diplomat representing the country of Japan. Our family lived in a small town in the small country called Lithuania. There was my father and mother, my auntie Satsuko, my brother Chiaki, and my three-month-old baby brother Haruki. My father worked in his office downstairs. In the mornings, birds sang in the trees. We played with girls and boys from the neighborhood at a huge park near our home. Houses and churches around us were hundreds of years old. In our room, Chiaki and I played with toy German soldiers, tanks, and planes. Little did we know that the real soldiers were coming our way. Then early one morning in late July, my life changed forever. My mother and Auntie Sasuko woke up Chiaki and me, woke Chiaki and me up, telling us to get dressed quickly. My father ran upstairs from his office. There are a lot of people outside, my mother said. We don't know what is going to happen. In the living room, my parents told my brother and me not to let anybody see us looking through the window. So I parted the curtains a tiny bit. Outside, I saw hundreds of people crowded around the gate in front of our house. The grown-ups shouted in Polish, a language I did not understand. Then I saw the children. They stared at our house through the iron bars of the gate. Some of them were my age. Like the grown-ups, their eyes were red from not having slept for days. They wore heavy winter coats. Some were more than one coat, even though it was warm outside. These children looked as though they had dressed in a hurry. But if they came from somewhere else, where were their suitcases? So he's seen children like him outside and wondering about them. What do they want? I asked my mother. They have come to ask for your father's help, she replied. Unless we help them, they may be killed or taken away by some bad men. Some of the children held tightly to the hands of their fathers. Some clung to their mothers. One little girl sat on the ground crying. I felt like crying too. Father, please help them. My father stood quietly next to me, but I knew he saw the children. Then some of the men in the crowd began climbing over the fence. 
Boroslav and Gucci, two young men who worked for my father, tried to keep the crowd calm. My father walked outside. Peering through the curtain, I saw him standing on the steps. Boroslav translated what my father said. He asked the crowd to choose five people to come inside and talk. So the people outside are trying to be safe. They're trying to get his father to help them escape. My father met downstairs with the five men. My father could speak Japanese, Chinese, Russian, German, French, and English. At this meeting, everyone spoke Russian. I couldn't help but stare out the window and watch the crowd while downstairs for two hours, my father listened to frightening stories. These people were refugees, people who ran away from their homes because if they stayed, they would be killed. They were Jews from Poland, escaping from the Nazi soldiers who had taken over their country. The five men had, had heard my father could give them visas, official written permission to travel through another country. The hundreds of Jewish refugees outside hoped to travel east through the Soviet Union and end up in Japan. Once in Japan, they could go to another country. Was it true, the man asked? Could my father issue these visas? If he did not, the Nazis would soon catch up with them. My father answered that he could issue a fleet few, but not hundreds. To that, he would have to ask permission from his government in Japan. So the men have come and they're asking his father to save them, and he has to ask permission. That night, the crowd stayed outside our house. Exhausted from the day's excitement, excitement I slept soundly, but it was one of the worst nights of my father's life. He had to make a decision. If he helped these people, we put our family in danger. If the Nazis found out, what would they do? But, he, but if he did not help these people, they could all die. My mother listened to the bed squeak as my father tossed and turned all night. The next day, my father said he was going to ask his government about the visas. My mother agreed it was the right thing to do. My father sent his message by cable. Guji took my father's written message down to the telegraph office. I watched the crowd as they waited for the Japanese government's reply. The five representatives came into our house several times that day to ask if an answer had been received. Any time the gate opened, the crowd tried to charge inside. So there's his dad. He's trying to save people and do the right thing. So that's part one of Passage to Freedom. We're going to read more next week, so be sure you tune in to next week's Read Aloud, Broncos. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. And I'm very excited about all the fun things that are going to happen next week. Remember, today and every day, it's great to be a Bronco. I'll see you next week, Broncos. Take care.